Hello, welcome to Sonography Radiology Training Channel. This series of videos is a scientific presentation about fetal sulfur sound. This is the 11th video in this video series about another soft markers of aneuploidy named fetal pyelectasis. First, my outlines about mild renal pyelectasis or pyelectasis. The first one is incidence of MRP, clinical significance of pyelectasis, imaging technique and appearance of pyelectasis for diagnosis, pitfalls and mimics, and final teaching points. The first one is incidence. Mild renal pyelectasis or MRP is estimated to occur in 2 to 5 percent of all second trimester ultrasound examinations. Fetal pyelectasis may be unilateral or bilateral, but is more frequently reported as bilateral. MRP is usually a normal variant that is too weak as common in males. What is the clinical significance? Typically, MRP resolves by 32 weeks gestation in approximately 80% of cases. According to many studies, association with trisomy 21, progression to obstructive neuropathy, and vesicourethral reflux have been reported. MRP can be divided into a low risk and high risk whereby high risk defined as maternal age older than 36 years old or other findings of fetal aneuploidy, which the high risk group is more strongly associated with fetal anomalies such as trisomy 21. Regardless of risk status, However, all patients with a diagnosis of MRP in the second trimester merit a follow-up ultrasound within 4 to 8 weeks to evaluate for any change. According to many studies, progression to hydronephrosis occurs in approximately one-third of second trimester cases, which warrants sonographic follow-up in the third trimester and in some cases postnatal evaluation. MRP in the setting of abnormal fluid volume, particularly oligohydraminous, warrants a detailed anatomic survey to exclude lower urinary tract obstruction of any etiology whatever the gestational age. As we can see in this image, K-hole sign in a fetus with urethral atresia at 13 weeks of gestation. Renal pelvis dilation of less than 10 mm in the third trimester is not likely to be associated with postnatal uropathology. Third trimester fetal renal pelvis measurement is useful in predicting postnatal outcome because severe renal pelvic dilation means equal or more than 15 mm should undergo comprehensive postnatal assessment and moderate dilation means 10 to 15 mm also had a high prevalence of uropathy also they rarely needed surgical intervention and the renal pelvic dilatation tended to resolve spontaneously parents could be reassured that dilation of less than 10 mm in the third trimester is unlikely to be associated with significant uropathy according to many studies, there is an important note that a single dilated renal collecting system measurement should be interpreted with caution as the renal pelvic diameter can fluctuate during the course of a single examination depending on the degree of bladder fling and maternal hydration. In this study, the research group assessed the variability in renal pelvis measurement only during two hours period and they saw that about 70% of cases fluctuated from normal 
to mild pyelectasis. About 7% of cases remain normal and 15% of cases lack treated from mild pyelectasis to hydronephrosis and 10% of cases flag treated from normal to mild pyelectasis and finally to hydronephrosis only during two hours of re-examination. So, there is an important question. Why does this extreme short-term variability in renal collecting system measurement occur? The reason is not clearly known but it reveals an important issue that you should never make a decision based on a single measurement of the renal collect system during a typical ultrasonographic examination. This study reported that emptying of the fetal bladder was associated with a significant decrease in the size of the fetal renal pallies by using an AP diameter of 5 mm to define renal pali dilation, 53% of the fetuses with RPD with a full bladder were shown to have normal renal pallies on bladder emptying. The results of many studies suggest that the presence of isolated pyelectasis may impact risk of Down syndrome in a high-risk population, but it remains a dilemma how to handle this finding in a low-risk population. However, based on the preceding data, it seems unlikely that isolated pyelectasis substantially impacts onyoploidy risk in an otherwise low-risk population and should not be a sole indication for invasive diagnostic testing. Now, the imaging technique and appearance of pyelectasis. This diagnosis is made when the anteroposterior dimension of the fluid-filled renal pelvis exceeds 4 mm prior to 32 weeks gestation. Measurements of the renal pelvis should be taken with the fetal spine at either 12 o'clock or 6 o'clock position to ensure greatest accuracy. The renal pelvis are identified on routine axial views at the level of the lumbar spine as on echoic structures located medially in the region of the renal hyla. Both kidneys and pelvis should be symmetric in size. MRP is defined as isolated renal pelvis dilatation with either no concomitant dilation of the renal calyces or at most of two calyces or calycectasis, whereby the pelvis measurement greater than 4 mm in the second trimester and greater than 7 mm in the third trimester. MRP is most often bilateral but can be unilateral and asymmetric. If MRP is suspected, longitudinal views means coronal or sagittal views should be performed through the kidneys to identify the presence of calycectasis. The presence of nearly diffuse calycectasis rather than dilatation of one or two calyces is diagnostic of hydronephrosis rather than MRP. Now, it's better to see a teaching case together. This axial image at the level of the kidney demonstrates bilateral pelvic with the renal pelvis measuring 7 mm. Sagittal scan of the right kidney demonstrates hydrourethronephrosis characterized by pelvic tasis with diffuse calycectasis diagnostic of hydronephrosis and also tertiusity of dilated ureter which extend into the pelvis. Axial image of the bladder reveals mild bladder wall thickening with stratification and sagittal image through the bladder demonstrates dilation of the posterior urethra. And these findings finally are reflective of lower urinary tract obstruction. 
This distinction is important as hydronephrosis implies obstruction and is associated with higher risk of renal injury and scarring, necessitating further management in the antenatal and postnatal time periods. When MRP is suspected, the fetal bladder should always be evaluated. Ideally, measurements of the renal pelvis should be obtained when the fetal bladder is empty. Change in renal pelvic size with normal bladder fling and emptying is reassuring. On the other hand, pelvic tasis in combination with bladder abnormalities including megacystis defined as bladder distension without emptying over 45 minutes bladder wall thickening or a urethral cell with resulting urethrovesicular junction obstruction is suggestive of uropathology. When bladder abnormalities are demonstrated correlation with amniotic fluid index for oligohydraminous, renal echogenicity, presence of renal cyst, and bilateral involvement as well as urethral dilation in males, it's imperative to guide management and potential intervention. What is the pitfalls and mimics for mild renal pilectasis? The pitfalls include extra renal pelvis, mild urethral pelvic junction obstruction, and permanent renal hilar vessels. The first one is extra renal pelvis. The most common mimic of MRP is an extra renal pelvis, which is a normal variant. An extra renal pelvis can be diagnosed by demonstrating non dilated or mildly dilated renal pelvis located predominantly outside the renal canter on either the axial or coronal images. As we can see in this axial image, at the level of the kidneys, demonstrate a prominent but normal left renal pelvis measuring 5 mm that is extra renal to the medial border of the left kidney, suggestive of extra renal pelvis. Another pitfall is mild urethropelvic junction obstruction. This obstruction is another mimic and is the most common cause of the fetal upper tract dilation. This diagnosis should be suspected whenever there is disproportionate dilatation of the renal pelvis compared to the calyces in the absence of urethrectasis. Now we can see another teaching case together. This image is related to 33-year-old female referred for bilateral renal pelvis dilation at 33 weeks gestation. Axial scan at the level of the kidneys demonstrate a dilated renal pelvis for gestational age and a permanent but normal left pelvis. Moments later, the left renal pelvis collapses for the diagnostic of a normal pelvis. In contrast, there is persistent pelvictasis on the right measuring 10 mm. Coronal image through the right kidney demonstrates moderate to severe pelvictasis that is disproportionate to the degree of mild calycectasis reflective of hydronephrosis. Also, there is no any hydroureter. These findings finally reflect congenital UPG obstruction. And the last pitfalls is permanent renal hilar vessels. Finally, permanent renal hilar vessels may be difficult to distinguish from renal pelvis on grayscale imaging. This diagnosis can be suggested through observing subtle pulsation on grayscale, but it best diagnosed using color Doppler to identify vascular fallow. Now, please pay attention to these final teaching points. The detection of prenatal pilectasis should prompt a detailed anomaly scan looking for extra renal anomalies and other markers of aneuploidy. 
prediction of outcome after a single scan is not possible, but parents should be assured that this is a common finding and the risk of serious sequelae is very small. The true significance of mild pilectasis for most cases must await the results of long-term follow-up studies. A repeat scan should be performed in the early third trimester or after about six to eight weeks. If the pilectasis has resolved at this time, it's debatable as to whether any further investigation are necessary as the risk of any clinically significant pathology is very small. If the dilatation is still present and particularly where the AP diameter has increased to more than 10 mm or other renal pathology suspected, the pediatricians should be alerted and postnatal scans and other investigations initiated as clinically indicated. Early in the newborn period, there is a state of relative oliguria and renal ultrasound scans can give a high incidence of false negative results. Some studies have suggested that all fetuses with prenatal pilectasis should be rescanned at a few months of age even if the initial scan was normal, so as not to miss any possible pathology. Any Potential abnormality detected in pregnancy is a source of greater anxiety to the parents and counseling in a combined clinic may help minimize the anxiety caused. Now, I suggest two others of my videos that are close to this video in terms of matter. And thank you for your attention.